Okay, Cordia. So Falter Rove. Falter Rove, hey, and Vrunner, you're not room with a duelish. Be much can you do a duel, eh, any fun spare? So we were kind of hoping to do it outdoors, but kind of not everything went went the plan. Um, so hopefully we can do it. We can come together at some stage towards the end of the summer. Um, so a new Tom Tom Matt Lundy Yogin and show a tagol kench kench a horse doing or logan you know Dark Lord. So we'll have Matt Lundy who's going to give us a talk on play themes, okay? And then afterwards we're going to just have a little talk just about the flying and just a little co gorgeous to everyone that took part and everyone that was able to take part in the funny, okay? So, Matt, so false or what, Matt? So, I don't mean my car, I don't mind. I was far enough also, rather than your foster car. So, I'm going to come back a hand to this. No, 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 man. Actually, no, 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 Two hand, just, yeah. Oh, my hand. Oh, so can I make this lesson? All right, okay. Okay. Um, so, a harja, come here, uh, fi faxi a year arms, uh, can a canch ga hian ga ga yan and shot. Faxi a last of the two, can like a bilingual, trying to get some Irish in, but just, uh, just to make sure that people can grasp it all. Um, probably most of it will be in, uh, Burlach, you know, unfortunately, but, uh, <laughs> Um, it's like shin shin mora shin mora for Adam and Eve, which you know that's just the way it goes. So, I'm uh, letting yoga Marie in show up. I'm going to ride. So I'm just wondering, do you know anybody here? Uh, just go ride the old legend there. Um, so anyway, uh, place names. They're a wonderful. Uh, one of the most beautiful ways to learn your language would be through place names. First of all, it can be a very um, uh, a casual thing, so nobody's watching you, nobody's kind of looking at you when you're doing this. But if you happen to drive around or walk around or even just think about the areas that you're sort of living in, you'll pick up a huge amount of information that will kind of reinforce um, your language. It will definitely reinforce your language. The other thing is, and we've often said this, and I know Goroid has kind of done this, he's blue in the face. Um, I often say that if you burnt all our books on Irish history. You just took them and dropped them into a, a bone fire on the 12th and, and let, let them kind of go. Um, you would still have all information uh, in the Log Animaha, Log Anyam, place name, Log Animaha, place names. Um, and you would do that and say like, a classic, it's a really good example because everyone picks up on it. You know that in Irish, if a word ends with an A, Marhampla, for example, Hota, Lampa, Tabla, Sorella, 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 and so on and so forth. That to get the plural, you add on to the end of the word an I fada, which becomes the dominant sound at the end. So Kota becomes Koti. Tabla becomes tabli, hatta becomes hati, sorella, sorella, sorella. So take a Kurdish name, and the Kurdish name is Kira, okay? Which uh, would suit Sophia and Danielle, the dark one, okay? Um, the dark one. Well, the plural, therefore, of Kira, because it ends with an A, the plural would be Kiri. And of course, which county is that in Ireland? And it's the one just above Cork, Kerry. So why is it called Kerry? Because the rest of us had uh, ginger hair, freckles and one tooth, and all these figures that occupied this spot were from the Basque country, uh, from Galicia, drop dead gorgeous. And there was us kind of pale skinned and frackly all looking at them. The Kerrys, the dark ones. So County Kerry. Uh, so, I mean, there's living history. You don't need an archaeological dig to find bodies and do DNA traces. We call them Kerry's for a specific reason. And wrapped up in that is thousands of years of history. So, Log and Yamaha have everything built into them. Um, 
every every place, every foot you put down on an inch of ground tells you something. It connects you very, very intimately. Connects you. Um, if you look at Belfast, if you take Belfast, um, <clears throat> you know, I live in a place called Gordon Amona. Now, Mon, Mon is generally the word for turf. Um, but I mean, if, if I went out to the back garden here and dug something up, it ain't going to affect and burn uh, in the fire. So why would they be calling it turf? Well, it is turf, but not in every part. The word uh, turf, it's a very, very old word. Eskimos have like a million words for snow, and the Irish have a million words for turf. All shapes, sizes, colors, levels of dampness, age, all built into these multitude uh, of words. And so the word uh, mona, mono, mona, very old word. Um, it's also the old word for a bog. So if you think of Belfast, obliterate everything. And you start from the bog meadows and work your way up the Black Mountain. It's all wet and boggy. Like humans have came. They have drained the life out of it. They've reshaped it. I mean, when I was a kid, there was no butcher road where the motorway and all is. Uh, it, it was all the bog metal, that whole stretch, huge big area of the bog metal. So it was a bog. It's an old word for a bog. So when you're seeing Mona and the place names around here, it's not that people were digging turf and burning it. It's just that the area, the land in question was boggy. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that uh, people weren't living on it. They didn't grow food in it, okay? The the cattle weren't out because they'd have sunk in it, you know, they'll right, quick save my cow. Um, they, they've just disappeared, you know? You made a herd, help! And that was it, the cow was just gone. Um, so you have aspects like that. But then that begs the question, where do we grow food? So you live in Belfast, yeah? where are you growing food? And of course, if you have some fundamentals, just some fundamentals, because they're reoccurring. They're absolutely reoccurring. You some fundamentals on place names. You'll know that when you hear ahe in, in a, a place name, like dari uh, um, thin ahe, okay? So you'll hear ahe. It's a feel. So thin ahe. Thin me knows kind of white. But I, I tend to um, refer to it as during summer, high season in summer, and the crops are blooming. And you have the old sting song, Fields of Gold. So you're looking at it, Finnehy, and you're saying, my God, it's like a wheat with all this wheat or barley or oats or whatever. It's your fields of gold. So we would have grown food in that area. Where would we have stored it? Well, if you drive down the Glen Road, you'll pass Grantia. And of course, Grantias exist all over Ireland. And Grantia is your granary or your storehouse. So over the winter, they all nipped down the Crancia for an old feed of grain and back up and made a loaf uh, in the house. So you have all that situation um, kind of going on. Um, but if you can close your eyes and run through place names, you'll get such a beautiful idea of how a place looked, how it was shaped, as opposed to what it is now. We're, we're, the, only, we're the only place in Western Europe that has that advantage in relation to place names. And they're so valuable, we can't lose them. There was a huge um, campaign um, by the, uh, the British administration, purely for administration purposes, nothing political behind it, to do away with place names and to introduce postcodes. And postcodes are the, the, the death of place names. Uh, so these place names are Log and Yamaha, they're absolutely unique. And we need to try and retain them. And um, what happened was in the early 70s, uh, communities sprung up to push to retain the place names. And it was a, a cross-community effort. There, there was nothing divisive about it. Um, people from a, a, a loyalist background, people from a nationalist background, or whatever religious backgrounds came together and forced the issue. So it's now been retained. The place names have been retained. And in fact, it's increasingly evident when you, see, when you get post um, through the post. Um, and place names tell you, tell you that. Uh, like if you shop on, uh, in West Belfast or and you go to Curly's, I call it Curly's, Sainsbury's, 
Sears Place is in Bill and Murphy. And one of the confusing things for us is we'll say, I know Bill and Murphy. You don't, that's only a housing estate. It's only a housing estate called Bill and Murphy. These are town lands. Loganium, Loganiamaha are place names for a town land and area. Not a housing estate. Never a housing estate. Okay. So Sainsbury's is in Bill and Murphy. It's in Bill and Murphy. It's not in the house estate. That's just an area of a certain size that they built and give it a name, Bill and Murphy. So we, if you're kind of my age-ish, and I can see most of you aren't, maybe you're right, and that's about it. Um, I don't know if Cormac's in the shout there. and whether we should. Uh, oh, David, David may be in. You look quite youthful there. Uh, I'll have to get up close, David. Um, if, if you think of politics, uh, we had an area that became very politicized and very divisive, I suppose, in terms of community politics in and around Portadown and the Drum Cree issue. So most people in my then became very, very um, aware. It was almost indelibly imprinted this term, Gervahi Road. Um, and of course, Gervahi Road, it's just a name given to a particular dray through in an area. But if you think of that area, Garvahi, so Garav, Garav in Irish means rough, like a dog's horse, rough, right? Garav Ahe, it's a field. So what can you deduce from Garvahi? Well, could you grow crops on it? No, you couldn't that. Why? Because the ground would have been uneven. There would have been dips and daves. So you couldn't grow crops on it. What about cattle and sheep? No, no, they'd have broke a leg, okay? It would have been heavily stoned, full of rock and everything. It's just rough as a dog's ours. So Gurfahi Road would not have been a place that was inhabited. People would have turned up with their tent a thousand years ago and went back off. I'm not going to fucking pitch tent there. They would have taken surrounding areas, but not in Gurfahi Road. Now, you wouldn't necessarily know that if you went there now to build up urbanized area. But if you speak even the most fundamentals of Irish in relation to those reoccurring names, just learn a couple of them. They're absolutely reoccurring in relation to place names. It will paint a picture. It will tell you a story. It will transport you back to a time and place. And you will get a feel before we came along and reshaped the landscape. You will get a feel for it. The other thing about place names is they are wonderful as a, a timeline. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we often talk about being invaded, uh, which, whilst not untrue, uh, it, it's a bit, um, we're being very righteous about it because um, if we denounce the fact that England comes here and occupies, uh, we went to England and occupied first. We took the whole West Coast of Britain, as soon as the Romans backed off back to Europe, we jumped on the ships, legged it straight over, and stole everything from the top of Scotland right down to Brooklyn Cornwall. We stole a lot and set up kingdoms all over the place. So we can't be self-racist about that we were occupied, okay? So we done it to them before they done it to us. Um, but you get a timeline when you speak Irish with these reoccurring, like ballet, Bali. More often than that, Bali, there's two words that sound very, very similar. Okay? Um, we don't need to be concerned about them in this sort of canch, this chat. But the most um, prolific of the two is Balia. And Balia is such an historic, old, old word. Um, and it, its earliest origins are simply about I, uh, I turned along, see a plot or a patch of ground on this expanse of land, and I put an old stick in it and say, do you know what? This is fucking mine. Uh, uh, this is mine. This is Matt's. Okay? And that's your bailiwick. No matter what it says, it didn't have to be a house on it or anything. Just fucking this is mine. Stay off. Right? So that was your bailiwick. That was your value. And we, never, we don't have turns. We don't have urban settings in Irish. We live in a very ruralized extended kind of setup. So with the construct of um, 
administration, the particular construct that we had in Ireland of from the low level Taoiseachs right up to the, uh, the overarching ones. Everyone, so Foxy there would have been like, he's the boss in St. James's. And then you want, I want to build an extension. You may fucking see Foxy, right? You got to go down and run it past him. He's the man, right? So you have this in a locality, but that locality is uh, only a certain size. It's a town land. So Balia then becomes attached to that town land. Uh, then when the Vikings come, they're the, they're the, the guys. Uh, um, they're the guys, first of all, that stole their women with their lovely fucking blonde hair and their blue eyes and their big fur boots, stole all our girls, right? But apart from that, uh, they give us these urbanized kind of settings. And, and through that, we attach the word Balia, then it becomes a town. And, and that's how it has, Balia has evolved. It has extended to incorporate uh, different nuances and meanings over the years. But Balia being its most fundamental, if there's a piece of software and it has a map of Ireland and every time you put one of the reoccurring names, part of a place name in Marhampla, for example, Balia, I read that comes up in the map. And of all the reoccurring place names that you can put in, if you put Balia in, the map becomes fucking red. Because everywhere is Bali this and Bali that and Bali the or, it becomes red with the dots. If you want to see how heavily treed, forest, uh, like forested the, the, the land was, put in names of trees. If you want to know where the oak grew, where the alder grew, where the birch, the beech, the ash, where it grew, not only will it show you, but you can then deduce over thousands of years, you can deduce what type of land uh, that we had in Ireland at the time. Today in Ireland, only 10%, only 10% of the land is arable. So we feed everyone and we'll continue to feed on 10% of the land, only 10% is arable, okay? And that's after we fucking spent ages draining the life out of it and blah, blah, blah. So what was it back in the day? So you can see uh, that vegetation, forestation only takes place in certain claims under certain conditions. And a great example of a bring you back to Belfast, I'm not being parochial here, but I am, right? If I bring you back to Belfast, we have Bali selling. Okay? So uh, I'm not sure what that was, David. <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, somebody from good old Bally Sillin, right? So Bally Sillin, my stomping ground when I was young. Um, so Bally Sillin, um, uh, so the word for a willow tree, Sal, right? Um, but the word for a willow bear, okay, is Salin. So Bally Salin, Bally Sillin. Not mean that mean anything unless you start speaking some bits of Irish. But what would be the purpose of working out or sussing out what Bally Sillin means? Well, here's the thing. If you go up the Bally Utah Road up uh, White Bray or up Lagany, and you come down that way, the, the landscape comes down in a, a, a gradual tilt, okay? But at the Bally Sillin Road, it kind of levels out a bit and then drops on down past our oil on down the Crumlin Road. Of what significance is that? Well, where the Bally Sillin is and where it levels out, all sorts of vegetation tried to grow there. All sorts of trees from pine, the ice and oak, all tried to grow there. And the water, the water that lay in that area, because it didn't get a good runoff, drowned them. So the one tree that went kitchen, I have fell on my fucking feet here, was the willow trees. So, Bally Sillin, why is it important? Well, if you're a nerd like me, it, it, it has a bit of a nuance to it, but it tells you something about the landscape. Fuck all else grew there, except willow, because it was waterlogged. It retained the water. The, only when the water grew quite high did it eventually run off, but it always re re retained that 
uh, level of water. There's a huge amount of clay on it, which is impervious. So the water just fucking sat there. And the only thing that went, please, please uh, let me there was the willow trees. So it becomes Bali Sillin, okay? Every place name tells a story. You can tell from a place name whether we're talking about Ireland before Christianity. You can tell whether we're talking about when the Christians come and make a dent. You can tell when them fucking drop dead gorgeous Vikings came and stole their women when they came. Uh, you can tell when the Normans came um, because they all do something to the landscape. Uh, Marhumpla, the Normans, what do they do? Well, the Irish weren't as um, sophisticated as them back in Europeans, right? And of course, we know the Normans, they're the early Vikings that come down into France. Um, Fake make champions against the French. France get tired and says, look, listen, see the land you've got, just fucking keep it, right? And they're Northmen. They're Northmen. The word Viking doesn't come along until the 1500s. So there's no Vikings, right? But they're Norse or Northmen. So the land that they give them in France, it's the land of the Northmen. So it becomes Northmen Day, Norman Day. So that's your Vikings, okay? And they're there for 200 years. They, they end up speaking French as good as any fucking Pierre in Paris. So they keep looking across English Channel at Dover. And it must be the White Cliffs or something. And it's like, uh, you know, we meet again. Let's go over there and fucking try a slice of that. So they, they go to England, 1066, the rest is history. And then they fucking look across at us and go, we'll have a slice of them. Um, but when they come, they, they have... Um, they're quite used that European thing where they have orchards and apple groves and all this kind of things here. So they bring lots of vocabulary with them. So that's why you have courts all over the place. That's why you have groves. That's why you have all these kind of things and, and place names because these like Normans bring them all over with it. They have all these lovely gardens and everything else, everything that we couldn't be arsed about. I mean, the Irish loved it because they never had the wife saying, get away out and do that fucking garden. We don't have a garden. The Normans aren't here. And the freaking Normans came. And we all ended up with a garden and we had to go out. I'm just looking at Danielle's lovely fucking flowers behind her. Definitely a Norman influencer, her, Danielle. Um, so uh, another one, if you travel if you travel the inland road to uh, Bally Castle, um, the one from Cushing uh, Dunn in um, you pass through the Fannison Lake. Uh, I don't know if anybody has been up there, but there was a wee said post there and it says Loch Arima, Loch Arima, the Fannison Lake. But of course, if you start speaking a bit of Irish, you can break that down. Loch, L O C H, is the Irish word, Irish Scottish word for a lake. So Loch, Ah, the magic Ah, the Rel of Ah, Wooch, Reich, Rad. A mach out the lake that ran out the vanishing lake Loch Arima, okay. Um, so it's like, oh yeah, that makes fucking sense. Um, the other thing about the language is, um, when the, the when the Celts were sort of sussing out what they were going to call places, uh, they weren't trying to be very sophisticated about it. Like the Celts, just to explain, we should never try and take all these fancy words in English and Berta and bring them in the Irish. In Irish, you're supposed to express what you're saying. You're not supposed to do that hard translation. You will do it up in like Stormont or places like that where it's very technical language. They'll do that. But see in Sikansh in the vernacular, you're obligated to express things, to express it, not to be hammering for them big words, you know? To express things. So when the Irish were looking at their place names, the, their official race, the Celts are an absolute visual race who just describe um, what they see. So again, if you want to go for a holiday to, to Water uh, Waterford, where might you go? Well, there's a cracking beach down there, bit of a holiday resort. What do they call it? They call it Tremor. And of course, what does Tremor mean? Well, it's Ra is a beach or a strand. And what does more mean? Big. So 
obviously these two guys with Ginger Hearn Fraggles stood on it and went, Jesus, look this easy this. Runs for Mays. What will we call it? And one of them went, got it, Tremor. And I went, ding, get ching, done, dusted, Tremor. Nothing complicated, nothing sophisticated. They just, they're very, very visual. The optics of it uh, are, are really, really good. And that's how. So if you think about some common stuff, and I tell this story about Melody Mod that lives in a, a street in Andy town called Owen Vara. El, uh, don't know if the creator's still alive. Um, in his 80s. And he lived in Owen Vara, spent most of his life there. Um, but doesn't know doesn't know what the street means. And this is how successfully we have been separated from any link, any link with the language. So we live here, we occupy this space and we have been totally separated from any fundamental, any basic link with an understanding of place names. I could walk out on the street with a make and say, excuse me, what's the Irish for mountain? And 99.9 will say, uh, you got me there. I don't know. Okay. But sleeve, why have we got sleeve do, sleeve donner, sleeve gullion? But we don't make the connect. We don't make the connect. Sleeve, the Irish word for mountain. When you flag it up, people may go, fuck yeah, and that makes sense too. Right enough, right enough, you know. Uh, I hear you. But we won't necessarily make the connect in the first instance. We could also say, well, sorry, here's the second word then. Can I ask you this? What's the Irish word for a folly? And they'll probably go, uh, listen, bad day. I'm in a bad day here. I'm just not getting any of these. But of course, we all know the word for a folly. If you drive up the Antrim coast, you can take a dip into the what of Antrim, the glens of Antrim, okay? So a glen is just the thinking Irish for a valley, okay? A valley is just the side of a mountain. That's all it is, the side of a mountain. So the nine glens of Antrim, the nine valleys of Antrim. That's all it is, the glen. So in the west here, where I am, you can drive up the glen road. And why did they call it the glen road? Because the fucking black mountain runs up the side of it. It's on the side of the mountain. So what else would they call it but the Glen Road? Okay. <clears throat> so this features in a lot of things. Again, if you're in the West, we have a pub uh, just down below me here, uh, the Glen Owen. It's a pub called the Glen Owen. Anybody from near this locality may have heard of it. The Glen Owen. Uh, where did it get its name from? Well, the same place that the housing estate got its name from, Riverdale. Okay, so Glen is a valley. We call them valleys. Uh, in Wales, they call them the valleys, the Welsh valleys. But in, in England, they tend to be a bit more gentrified. So they'll say, oh, no, 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 no. It's a deal. It's very quaint and dainty. You know, the deals, Yorkshire valleys. No, 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 no. The deals, the Yorkshire deals. Very gentrified, very nice, you know. So a valley is a deal. So uh Glen, the valley, Owen, Owen. Usually when you hear Owen in a place name, it's not a guy's name, it's a river. Okay. So the valley of the river. But again, in English, they would gentrify that instead of calling it a valley, they would call it a deal. So the deal of the river, river deal, Glen Owen. Okay. So if you go to the health center, beside that house estate, it's called Bally Owen. The town land of the river. Okay. Um, I live in Gordon Amona, and the housing estate beside me is Down Fine. And when you hear the word down or done or doon in an Irish place name, it means a stronghold. It can mean a fort. But I always caution that people don't think of a building like down at go to St. James's Nurse Foxy sitting on top of this big fucking mad structure. Hey, who are you? What do you want? Right. It isn't always a stronghold could be like somebody rules that patch, but they don't sit like Foxy on top of a big castle, right? So a dune can be a stronghold, but it can't be a physical, it can't be a physical uh, structure, okay? Um, so 
Doon Fein, that's Finn. Doon Fein. <laughs> Doon is a fort. Finn means white. What color is the fort? White? The white fort? What do you call the, the old pub? Nelly Town Road? The white fort. Doon Fein. Doon Fein. Um, so why do they call that a state Doon Fein? Because it's Bali, Balia, Doon Fein. The town land of the white fort. So we know as sure as my old her yours is pointing to the ground that there was a sort of white fort in that vicinity. Okay, so Bali down fan, down fan, the white fort. Um, and all these things then start making sense. So the pubs called the Glen Owen. We may never ever question that, but once you have now started dipping your toe into log and Yamaha place names, then they will come alive. When plantation happened here, and um, uh, the, the peoples came over from Scotland, they seldom ever changed any of our place names. They seldom ever changed any of our place names. The reason being, the reoccurrence of place names in Ireland was mimicked and has been historically in the place names all over Scotland. So you get them like down fine, doon. So uh Dundee, Dundee, you, you get it all, it's all over the place. So those who came with plantation, they were just meeting and encountering place names that they had met back in Scotland. So it was like no big deal, stay with that. Okay. Uh, and that's how it kind of worked. But then you can find out. Uh, lots of things. So knock, you hear the word knock used in a place name. And knock comes from the Irish word crack. And Ulster, uh, you know that the language we speak, the English or uh, the Irish we speak in Ulster is the least, the least tinted, the least diluted, because Ulster was the last to kind of fall under English rule. So it has been the least contaminated by the influence of, of anything else. Uh, whereas down south, they just walking through the hands up and says, look, you know, leave me alone. Go ahead. Occupy this space, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, in Ulster, uh, and there must be something in the Ulster Seki, wherever duration you're from, this fucking like no surrender, there must be something there in the fucking Seki up north. Um, so the word, so when you have a first letter in Irish and it's followed by an N for Norman, we pronounce that N as if it was an R. Really strange kind of stuff. So C for Charlie, N for Norman, O for Orange, C for Charlie. Down south, they'll say Canuck, because you know we don't have a K in the alphabet, a C is the equivalent. They'll say Canuck, Canuck, right? And we're looking at them saying, what are you doing that for? We pronounce the N as if it's an R, so we say Crook, Crook, okay? When the English came here, they couldn't make fucking sense of what either of us were saying. So they says, we're going to spell it like this, K-N-O-C-K, and we're going to pronounce it fucking knock, right? So they just pronounced it knock. So every word that you encounter is called knock. It comes from the Irish word crook, or down south, canuck, right? Um, so it means a hill. And the word for a rabbit is cunny. So uh, knock in English, knock nagoni, crook nagonini. The Hill of the Rabbits or Rabbit Hill. So Knock Nakoni. Place names are found everywhere and they tell you loads. And a, a good example of the Irish being a visual race. The most prolific place on the coast of Ireland, 3,000 miles of it. Okay. The most prolific place around the coast of Ireland for shell food is Slagle. Okay. Because if you look, Here's the east of Ireland and here's the west. If you go down the west coast, past Donegal comes in and you have an area called Strand Hill and it comes out like a big stump, like a short nipple kind of thing and then back in again and round. And because of that, when the, the tides and the movements of the water, when they hit that, they meet an, an obstacle and it churns up the entire sea floor. And in, in the process of doing that, all this food gets splattered out everywhere in the water. And shellfish, they're mostly filter food, right? So 
they will grab all this food. It's like fucking brilliant. Um, so uh, a, a clam or a mussel or a fucking prawn, where are you going? We're moving up to Slego, right? Why? Because it's fucking food everywhere. So they all move. They all, all the prawns fuck off up to Slego and they all live there, right? So we call the area Slego, an Irish Schlegat. So what does Schlegat mean? It has two meanings. One, the most fundamental is a shell. But the second one is the place of the shell, like the land of the shells. Okay, it's an area full of shells. And the Irish knew this so well. Now, the fact that scientifically it is the most proliferous uh, area for shellfish was not wasted on the Irish. They knew it. So what do they call it? The same as them fuckers with their long black hair, olive skin from fucking the Basque country down in Kerry, the Kerrys, the gorgeous ones. We call this Schlega. A bounty of shellfish. We didn't call fucking Nitrum, we didn't call Donegal or anywhere else. Slego, we call it Schlegak because it's the most bountiful spot in Ireland for shellfish. So you see, even the sass is kicking in here. Place names tell you millions of things about the land that you walk on that ordinarily you would be blind to if you don't dip your toe in the water and try and learn a wee bit of Gilga. Okay? So Schlega, very important. So the other things, you have this. Two words for an early, an early prototype of fort. One was a Rath, and the other one was a, a Liss. Okay? Rath is the earlier one. So Rath and Liss, you have them all over the place. So you'd have like Liss Nishara. So Liss is a fort. But again, back to Foxy and St. James's, it's not like him sitting there with a fist on the fucking hip at the top of this big fort. What do you want? You know, it, it can just, it can mean a stronghold. And in terms of animals, that can mean like a pen, a pen where you would keep animals secure, secure from predators or secure from escaping. So we, we got to have a, a, we're only con conveying a meaning here. Don't Never hang your word on a solitary translation of an Irish word. It's expressing something. Please don't do that when you're carrying it over in the burla. If you hang your coat on it, you'll lose the richness and the waiter's sort of extended meaning of things. So doom is a stronghold. But for what? You could keep pigs in it, sheep, horses, cattle. It could be that kind of stronghold, or it could be fucking fist on the hip on top of the castle. This is my billy work. Nobody gets in. Uh, so it's it's extendable. It's very inclusive. It has a waiter than a, a single solitary hang your coat on translation. So this is a stronghold. Listen to Sharak. Sharak is a young horse, a foal. So this is where they trained them. They took the, the local Celts, took all their young horses, put them through a rigorous training session, separated uh, you know, um, Robin or, or like Robin the old nag. I don't think he's doing too well. You know, Robin, come on for a walk. You know, they kind of sorted them out. Uh, who was doing what uh, among the horses? So listen to Shara. We named the listen to Shara because that's where we took all the young foals. That's where we done the training with them. Uh, we done the separating. We kind of yep champions so so and that one fucking, you know, we'll eat the night. Um, so we have these names, but let me get back to Sleo, Schlega. So we have the word for a rabbit, okay? And um, we always had Irish hair in Ireland. It's it's native, it's a native species to Ireland. Uh, it's been there for the longest kind of time. Uh, but it's always believed that we never had rabbits and that the Normans bring the rabbits with them. Now, it's probably quite true that that was the case the Normans brought them. But listen, how freaking clever. You get two rabbits, you fire them out in the field, and you come back next week and there's a hundred, right? Yeah. And it's like, just grow your own food. Now, I have to say, I'm a vegetarian. I could not eat a wee rabbit. Uh, and I so hope I don't offend anyone. But back in the day, there mightn't have been any vegetarians. So <clears throat> the rabbits, you just left them till it. They just munched the grass and 
and and bread as they do. So it was a plentiful uh, food supply. You couldn't go wrong. So uh, especially in the early 1800s, going up to Angorta Moor, the, the sort of famine, the Great Hunger, <coughs> the Irish were leaving ports all around Ireland for new worlds. <coughs> and one of them, of course, was uh, for America. But there was a, a port from which they were leaving in Slego itself, Slego Town. So there was one particular ship there. The captain was a, lo a local Slego guy. And there's um, two islands there. If, if yeah. you're on the northern side of Strand Hill, there's two islands there. One, of course, fucking Oyster Island has to be. And the other one is uh, Rabbit Island, right? But remember the word for Rabbit, Cunny. And Cunny gets anglicized as Coney. So you go down towards Newcastle and you pass Coney Island, uh, Rabbit fucking Island, right? So anyway, this guy shoots all on board, loads the Irish up, sails over, right? Sails over to fucking uh, New York with his, his load. <coughs> and on the way in, he ended out constantly. And on the way in, he always spots his fucking island on the way in. And it's full of fucking rabbits. And he keeps saying, do you know what? That's just like fucking Coney Island back home. So he names it Coney Island, and you still have it to this day, Coney Island in uh, America. So Coney Island's abound all over the place. Rabbit Island, the end of the rabbits. Okay? But you would miss those nuances. You would miss those links. You would miss those connections and meanings if you don't start learning language. And I know Faxi wants to get you to converse, which is beautiful and should be the key point. But from this end, I'm saying, please, please attempt to learn place names. There's about 30 words that you could undertake to start learning, and they will reoccur absolutely every which word, right? Uh, and, and they'll give you a, a breath of meaning. They'll give you a great understanding of place names. I'm not going to speak too much longer here, but a couple of other wee things. We have a couple of words for a, a church, okay? A couple of different words for a church. And they're almost like time stamps. So if you see a particular name for a church, you know, ah, that's from freaking back in the day. And if you see a later name, you go, oh, well, sure, that's later in the day. So they're great for giving you a timeline uh, on things. So it, it, people, I'll answer this because people usually ask, why have we got different words for a, a church? Well, why have we got an abbey? Why have we got a monastery? Why have we got a cathedral, a cathedral or a pro-cathedral? Why have we got a church, a chapel, and a freaking convent? Uh, you've all these, because they all have a different kind of purpose. So um, churches, remember churches in their day, back in the day, were small and tiny. They weren't big fucking things. They were the Normans came and went, hey, I'm making a statement here, built this big shit ass book on these big abbeys. Um, but back in the day, there was five roads in Ireland. Historically, right up until you needed Irishman, there was five roads in Ireland. The rest of them were all tracks. Five roads, they're the ancient five roads of Ireland. Okay. Um, and then after you needed Irishman, the, the English administration started building uh, what they call military roads. Okay, they start that program of building military roads, most of which we all know today, but we don't know them as military roads. Um, but up until that point, there's still the five uh, main roads. So it was very possible that in Ireland of the day, that people were born, not baptized, lived together, not married, and died without last rites or funeral rites because they never ever met a man of the cloth. They were just absolutely isolated. Bog isolated them, forest, which were dense with wolves, wild boar and everything else, very dangerous. Mountains were there, rivers were there. They were isolated. This is hillbilly fucking stuff uh, of the Mississippi and everything, you know, it's like, whoa, don't go there, you know? Um, so real, real scary stuff, real scary. It's like going to Ballon Murphy, you know, like, oh, fuck, don't go in there unless you have to. Um, so... Uh, that was the way people grew up and never ever met a, a, a man of the cloth. But that was very, very natural that that would be the case because you only had a handful of clergy. People didn't live in urban settings. They were fucking scattered to the five winds. Um, so 
you build a small church. Why? Because there's only five turning up on Sunday. Okay. And just by the by, on our days of the week, on our days of the week, I presume we all know them. The term that we use for Freddy, Anya, it, it isn't the word for Freddy. It doesn't mean Freddy. We don't have a word for Freddy. Anya means fast day. Okay. So we translate. Be careful about translating in English. All we're doing when we translate in the English is finding the equivalent. What, what do the English call that day in English? They call that Friday. It's not fucking Friday in Irish. We don't have a word for Friday. It's in you. It's the fast day. Okay. Later on, it became like uh, only eat fish. Only eat fish, no meat. But it was a fast day. And a very Christian influenced. So even on the days of the week, you can kind of see that. Um, in English, the day after Saturday, we know is Sunday. A real pagan term. What do you worship on that day? The fucking sun. Get down your knee. Well, you can't do it here. There probably it probably wasn't people's favorite day here because it was freaking rain every day, right? Um, who's your god? The sun. Oh, god, don't want him, right? Um, it doesn't listen to anybody. But so it's a pagan term. Still to this day, it's a pagan term. Sunday, you worship the sun. But in Irish, it's donat or jidoni. But the word Sunday itself is donat. Donat means church. It's church day. You go and pray. So it's built into the fabric of the word. So Donach, Donach, you see all over the place. So you have Donach Moor. So where will I meet you? Down in Donach Moor. What does it mean? What a big shit ass church. You can't miss it. Right? I meet you down at the big church. Obviously, all the other churches were retainy freaking ones, right? But there was one this big shit ass uh, church. I'll meet you down at the big church. Um, you have Donach Cloney. If you're heading from Belfast to Newry, you possibly turn off for uh, Donna Cloney. Cluan, Cluan is a meadow. Now, of course, this is a real country, say. So you have all these wild flowers, nice and pretty, these wee meadows. So Cluan, Cluny is meadows. So Donna Cluny, the church of the meadows. Um, and, and you just go, fuck yeah, I can see this. I can just get the feel for this wee place. Or you have Donna Gadi, uh, out by Malay and on the Irish Peninsula. So Donna Gadi, and the experts, uh, they don't come down on the definitive translation of it. They have two potential ones. Donach is a church, Donach a D. Uh, it can either mean uh, the church of the moat, like the moat and bailey, the weak and defensive, or the church of the fool. Um, they can't definitively say, uh, but would it be called, do you think, the church of the fool? Probably not. More likely, the church of the moat. So, Donach a D. So just quickly, to finish on churches here, we have many variations in English and we had many variations in Irish, but some of the terms were very, very old. And one of the oldest we have is L for Larry, A for Apple, N for Norman, N for Norman, Lan. Okay? And it's a very, very old word for a church. So if you pop uh, out of Belfast there and you head over towards Crumlin Glen Navy there, um, Glen Navy, as an example, Geroyd knows this once, one of his favorite. Every time he's in a pub, he tells this story, right? Did you know? I think he does it like this. Oh, did you not know? Oh, did you not know? Right? And I keep saying to him, Geroyd, don't be doing that. Oh, don't be doing that, right? But he keeps doing it. So, uh, Glen Navy. So, what does it mean? Well, first of all, there's no G in front of it. There's no G in front of it. It's not Glen. There's no fucking mountains out there. There can't be a valley. So, do. Use your powers of deduction, right? Become fucking Poirot or Aaron said, use your powers of deduction. There can't be a valley if there's no fucking mountain, right? So you have, uh, I'm cursing a lot here, not if you're taping this. Can you do a, can you do a bit of that? Okay. Um, so there's no valleys and there's no mountains. So why would they call it Glen Navy? Well, of course, right away then, if you're in your eyes, you know, well, that can't be true. I, that can't be true. So there can't be a G. Why is there a G? Well, we have papal records going back to the 1300s for this area that we know as Glen Navy. But it's not Glen, it's Lan. Lan and Awi. Okay? Lan is a church. But what happened is around the 1700s, some English administrator went, listen, it's fucking Glen this and Glen that and Glen that. Some backer has left the G off here. So he stuck a G on it. And it became Glen thereafter, but it's not Glen, it's Lan. Lan and Awi 
the church of the dwarf. And there's something very provoking about this because if you think of a high king of Ireland, think of cultural trends. A high king had to be perfect. I mean, physically perfect, right? Like a, a fine specimen of a man. Any defect at all, and, and it was like, out. so we, we probably heard folklore of Cormac McGart. Cormac McGart was the one high king that the one, uh, excuse me, out. They, they showed him the door. And the reason being, he was out fighting uh, like a champion with his neighbors, big fake, swords out, spears, blah, blah. And he lost his eye. Okay. So the Council of Elders all sat down, had a meeting, says, Annie has seen Cormac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here he's lost the fucking eye. You're kidding me. Honestly, God, he's lost the eye. Right. We're going to have to get rid of him. So they just went, Cormac, sorry. And that's the way it was. You were less, less than perfect. You had to be perfect, you know? Uh, so they, he's the only high king we know of that they said, uh, cheerio, you know. Um, so if you think Arlene Foster get get hurt, poor fucking Cormac get lashed, right? Um, uh, so for to be a dwarf, to be a dwarf, uh, back in the day when there's a culture of how you've looked physically. This person must have been really powerful, must have been really, really clever. There had to be additional attributes that this person had that allowed them to overcome what at the time they thought was a physical impairment uh, and became so powerful that it's mentioned in all sorts of papal documents that it's mentioned in taxi, uh, taxation rules and everything else. And it was always long and then around the, Late 1700s becomes Glen. No, put a G missing or put that G in. So Glen, 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 my leave, Akharja, or do you want me to sit on, Faxi, and enjoy the presentation? Um, it's, it's up to yourself, Matt. Oh, um, yeah. Can we brass yeah. off the fucking um, jaw? Yeah. Just boil, up, boil up some away as a goal, Matt, as in Kenshin. Um, can I, can I, can I? Can yep. I eat that some away, Fad? Um, just to be saying there, thanks to Matt. Um, yeah. Very interesting. And you just can hear how important the place names, how important the logon names are, not only the language, but just to your thinking. Of where where we come where we come from ourselves. So go on, get us in what? Culture car, culture road. Yeah. Yeah, from my from my stop it, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Um before before we move on, Sulla Mogamajure, has anyone got any questions they want to ask Matt or Matt, what would be the best source to try and find these, try and, try and find all the names, but with an English breakdown so you understand what it is? I wouldn't uh, understand it with an Irish. Yeah, I have a couple of good books. Do you know, I'll, I'll find out the one. Um, I wouldn't want to suggest anything too comprehensive because it just turns your head. I don't know what, what pitch you are, where, where your Irish is at the moment, Dahi. Um, but, Not that great. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, there's a couple of there's a couple of more uh, font books, basic books that are really good for doing what what I was suggesting about. There's about thirty words, and if you crack them thirty words, you can travel all over the place. You know, it has words like Bali, carry, clock. You know, they're all basic. Uh, and once you get them, like you go into Kilbrony uh, Forest Park in Ross Traver, climb to the top, and you go up and see clock more, right? Now, it's this thing, it's the size of two houses. It's big, giant, but one stone, right? Where, so what did they call it? They called it Clockmore, the big stone. I mean, my word, it's like Tremor, the big fucking beach. Uh, why would they make something up? Just, what will we call this? Oh, I got it, fucking Clockmore, the big stone. It's as bonus, it's as basic uh, uh, as that, uh, my man. But I, I will, I'll send them through. I'll send a couple of things through to Fra Faxi on the books. And have fun, please have fun with some of the place names, you know. 
Go me, let me hug it. I'll check her. And we'll, and we'll end cash like the new Bella. Does anybody else have any questions? Or... No? Oh. Joe Ward, no? All right, no. all right. Oh, let's go, 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 Matt. All right, yeah. Go, Margaret, that's Okay, so we'll not keep you as um, Rowata. So we'll not keep you as too long. It's it's more and true. It's more and true in that juggling um, a veil of Kayla. Sun on it, no teeth and weed on it. Um, so it's unfortunate that we weren't able to come together in person, um, whether inside the on it or outside the on it. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully we're not too too long. Hopefully not too long to go before we're able to. Um, just very briefly, um, why lum more co gorgeous a goal more if got if he got forward a gill again um in honorary vac. So as the Irish language development officer in honorary vac, um I'm only in the job a couple of me, I'm only here a couple of months. Um and it's it's a massive spraggy do so. It's a massive um spraggy for me to see so many people being involved in the language. Um and so many people being in th so enthusiastic and want to learn more and want to push themselves up to the next level. And I think with in Scan Navani, so the test for Scan Navani in particular was um, it's a huge success, not only as the honoured looking out on everyone, but I think it was a huge success, everyone I was speaking to, um, that came to me and said that it inspired them to move on to the next level. And some people want moving on to maybe GCSE or art level. And some other people that I was actually speaking to talking about maybe going on to do a degree as well. So in a lot of different ways, um, it is, it's a really important scheme. So a scam in that Kapodaki, scam the Vanyi, um, or Kodjo or Valley different in a lot, a lot of different ways. It inspires people in a lot of different ways towards the language. And I think with the amount of people that were able to do the exam and were able to get their Fuanyi, no matter if it was the couple of football or if it was the Fuanyi Arrogate or the Fuanyi Or, I think it represents something of a certain a certain amount of praise that's deserved of every single one of you that put the effort in to learn that couple of football or push yourself on to learn the extra couple of football that you um, that you managed to achieve. And just on behalf of myself, on behalf of the others, um, Tamisha ain't that boy. Go an honoured. Listen to Rangana Ayanu. So I'm really thankful that you picked the honoured, the representatives and the and the leaders towards towards the language. And I just hope, I just hope that it it inspires more people to move up, to continue learning the language. And as Matt was saying as well. The language isn't just about sitting and reading a book or sitting in a class maybe an hour or two hours a week. It's, it can be everything that surrounds you. It can surround your life, okay? And that's something that I want to do personally in, in the new role. Um, I want people to be engulfed in the, in the language. I want to not, not take over their life, but I want them to think about everything that's gone on in their life through the language. And I think from talking to people in some of the classes over the last few weeks, I think this is this is the kind of direction that we're going. Um, so, boy, I'm sure that's Molly all war done Jigrish. Um, I think got to you. Okay, so a massive, massive congratulations and praise to everyone who took part. And I, I want to say a special thanks to Anne and Cormac that spent all the time preparing the classes, not only for the whole year, but especially um, for this one. It spent their time preparing you for it and preparing extra notes for you, sitting down over Zoom, whether it was through Zoom, through email, through WhatsApp groups, and making sure that you were as comfortable as possible um, to achieve what you wanted to achieve. And as I said before, it doesn't matter whether you learned one word or whether you learned 100 words. If you learned one new word, ask Yelga through this scheme, that's a success in my eyes. And I think it should be a success to yourselves as well. And just, you think about that um you can you consider every single thing that you have learned whether it's one thing or a hundred things it's still a success and it should, i think it should give you that just wee bit of winning and sprag sprag 
that just wee bit of confidence to move on to the next level. Okay. Um, just a wee brief breakdown. We had harsh game of Wanyi. Okay, so over all three levels, we had Octor Jig. So if we Octor Jig at Jerry Law, um, Fuanya couple of fuck out of up. So we had 18 people that managed to achieve the Fuanya couple of fuck out. They got one yeah. level. So that's the whole guard of his live. Massive, massive achievement. And I'm sure, I'm sure as Anne has spoken to you as well about it, whether it's a couple of fuck out, that's a couple of fuck out extra that you can use now in your everyday life. And the more you use those couple of fuck out that you've learned, whether half of the sentence is in English and maybe the other half is the couple of fuck out that you've learned, that's a success. And that will only add to your confidence to progress. Okay, so Coke Arches. Um, Fuanya Arrogage. The Cheshire a Jerry Law Fuanya Arrogage of Winchamak. So we'll have six people that managed the reach, they achieve the Fuanya Arrogate, the silver Fuanya. So Coke cool Arges, Lesson Cheshire. So my Shiv. And last but not least, an Anya Orr. So the gold Fuanya. Oh. The Cheshire Ugging, a Jerry Law Fuanya Orr, Winchamak. August, it's Rud Alwari, an Anya Orr. Um, I remember when I done it, when we were young in the bone school, we were in Ranga Shack when we done it. And I still have it from Ranga Shack now. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, but it, it's a, it was a huge privilege. And even my, my mommy and my granny achieved it when they were a little bit older than when I was when I got it. And it was always something that we held dear. And I think anyone that has achieved, whether it's the Sonia or Argage or a couple of fuckle, you should really be proud of yourselves, okay? Because it's a really, really big deal. And I think you should carry carry that into whatever whatever you're going to do after the ring. And, that, and try and progress and try and keep a hold of what, you, what you've learned in these classes. Um, so just, I'll let Cormac say a couple of football, but just on behalf of the honoured, um, boy, I want to just put us all war, a goal, a gap, didn't you? A Jerry Law and the Fuanyi went to map. So massive... Congratulations to everyone that achieved what they set out to achieve. And we will post out. I have, most people have sent me a real first. So most people have sent me an email with their names and addresses. And we will post out your chastis. So we'll post out your certificate and your fuanya before the end of the week. And if anybody wants, so I've sent everyone an email. If anyone wants to collect it in person, that's no problem. Um, you's, I'm sure you all have the honoured address. If not, I'll send an email with it. Um, you can collect it from the honoured as well. Okay. So if you would like the collect it from the honoured, just drop me an email. And if you would like it at least post it out to you, again, just send me an email with your address and we'll post it out to you as well. Karakalor. So co Arja has lived and yep. uh, well, a couple of football comic around. Uh, could you? Need need Jeremy Moran. Uh geez, are all fed up listening to talk. But uh, it was very enjoyable, I have to say, a very enjoyable experience. And Gramagat Matas and Lergus Uholsen, uh, a very unique insight into into place names. Uh, uh, very interesting indeed. Uh Reese Janams co guards la a hand in a when uh the the gradam show because it's gradam at I guess uh, you you've all you've you've achieved something substantial as brain should should it be a couple of fakal silver fine or indeed a fine or it's a it's a job of work that you've done you've learned a, a certain standard of Irish and you've been able to converse to a certain standard. And that is uh, that's deserving of congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, again, as Brian said, it's, it's heartwarming for us uh, to see such interest in the language and to see such a following in, in, in classes. Uh, and while we, we, we can't have physical classes, the, uh, the virtual classes on Zoom have been amazingly uh, popular, and it's a, it's a credit to each and every one of you 
did you take the time and the interest to to partake in these classes and to and to develop your own language your own language skills and understanding so kogarjas ahandana og uh august uh Tad Kogarj has touched the my hug of user, well deserving of all the congratulations that you get. My chef. Hi, chef. Are we allowed to say something? Yes, Tahi. Well, I would like to thank the honoured. I've had three different teachers' experiences of three different teachers there. And the learning that I've had off all three of you, and particularly because I was with her for the longest, they were fantastic. And I want to learn the rest of my to Sulagam. May we leave a lava wine later on it. My father, so so faggy made Shivan Chin. Okay, so we'll leave you there. Okay, and um, as this is part of our fella Lergas, so show him our cuts to Ella Lergas at a rock dog in a chat and show. Um, to a couple of Emma Dalogin, chance to make a of them. So we have a couple of more. Um, events just before the weekends as part of Lergas Fella um, tomorrow afternoon so Tranona and Mark we've got um, a walking tour of of the Gael and Kefri Gaeltakta so the Gaeltak quarter so we're meeting at we'll be meeting at Castle Street just the Castle Street there and walking as far as the city cemetery with a stop halfway in the Cultural for a cup of tea um, and again it's absolutely free and it's just a walking tour with Kroher McShekish who's going to give us just an insight of the history of the language on the Falls Road and the area. Okay, so if anyone's interested in it, um, we're meeting at Castle Street at Lachanye Hain at half one tomorrow afternoon. Okay, and Erin Inya, um, Majin Inya, Trinona Inya. So Friday morning afternoon at Lachanye Doyig. So half 12, we're going to have another talk with Fergal Mc McFlusky. So with Fergal McCluskey, the history lecturer from St. Mary's, will be giving us a talk on um, colonialism and the Bonnu and Stat, okay, to so the formation of the state in the North here, partition from 1920 to 21. Okay, so that'll be live on Zoom. And if anybody wishes to take part, just drop me an email and I'll send you the Zoom links for that as well. Kirkalor. So, Co oh, Gorgeous, live a lake. So, congratulations again. And I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Hi, Chef. Okay. Hi, Chef. 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 Hi, Chef.